Let's do a little introduction on Linux home directories. So if you have a fresh new Linux machine and you want to get around, first you have to log in. So let's log into this machine. All right, now that I'm in this machine, I come to my desktop and I can see this is nice and pretty. You can see these, all these fun things. But we want to look at what the home directory looks like, looks like underneath. All right, so in this machine, I can use the ls command to take a look at my directory. So when I'm ls, it will list the files in my directory. You notice that these things are highlighted in blue. They are all directories, so subdirectories. Uh, if I type in ls minus l, I can get this list of directories in a list format. You can see right here, it lists information about each of these directories in my, or subdirectories. I have desktop, which is things that appear on my desktop. I have documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, and videos. All right. Now, this isn't all of the files in my directory. I can use the minus A switch to list all of them. So LS minus A, and that will list all these directories and everything that starts with a dot character. So on Linux machines, if it starts with a period or a dot character, it is considered a hidden file or hidden directory. So the minus A will list all of them. If I want to get it in the list format, I can combine the minus L and the minus A to get a list format. So LS minus AL, and I can get all of these files. I can see these ones right here with the dot, leading and I can see the directories that do not have a dot leading all is listed now what am I seeing right here well I am seeing directories see directories with a D in the front each of these directories has a D in the front and then things that are not directories right here do not have a D in the front if it has just radar dash it is a normal file I can see next permissions, permissions for each of these files and directories. They have a read, write, and execute bit. Read, write, execute. Read, write, execute. So the first set right here, the read, write, execute, is for the owner. So because I am the owner, these are the permissions I have, read, write, execute, for this dot cache. For documents, I can see I have read, write, and execute. The next one, next three, are my group. So I am the Joseph user, and I am also part of the Joseph group. But other people could also be part of the Joseph group. They just aren't. The group gives them read and execute access, but not write access. So for a directory, what a read access, access means is that you can list the contents of the directory. The write means you can create things in the directory, and execute means you can get into the directory. So technically you could, I guess, get into, not be able to get into the directory, but still be able to list contents, and you could also be able to get in the directory, but not list the contents, depending on how you set the permissions up. Then the last three right here are for the read, write and execute for everybody else who is not part of the user or the owner or the group. So these are the permissions right here. And you can see these are directories or files. For execute bits on files, that basically means that they are executable and you can run them. All right, next the number right here in this is the number of links pointing to that thing. So let's take a look at um, my desktop directory. There are two links. What does that mean? Well, it means that there are two things pointing to the desktop directory, which sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? Well, let's start with something easier first. The bash RC file. Bash RC has one, one link pointing to it. What does that mean? That means that there is some place where you can point to that location of memory. And for the bash RC, there is a 
a, a grouping of memory somewhere which has all the contents of the bash dot bash rc file then this directory that i'm currently in my home directory has a link pointing to the address and memory of the bash rc file and that's why we get a one there because the one is the pointer from my current home directory. If you go down to desktop and documents, there's a two there. Well, that means that this current home directory is pointing to that directory, but there is also another pointer to it. What is that other pointer? Well, every single directory on a Linux machine points to itself. If we go to the very top, you can see there is this dot directory. If you type in cd space dot, you will change directories into your current directory. Which sounds a little strange, doesn't it? Type in cd dot, and then do a directory listing again, and I can see that I'm in the same directory. If I do cd desktop, and do ls minus l, I can see that there is nothing in my directory except for the dot and the dot dot. So I'm having cd dot type pwd for print working directory. I can see that I am in this home Joseph desktop directory. I type in cd dot again and then type in pwd again. I am still in the same directory. If I type in cd dot dot, then I am back to the directory I was just in, which is home Joseph. So I do ls minus al. And I can see that back here. So that should probably help you figure out that the desktop directory, at least, has a pointer from my home directory into the desktop directory and from the desktop directory into itself, which is where we get the number two. My current directory, my home directory, has 14. Let's try to figure out what these 14 are. One is clearly the dot directory. It gets me in there. So that's one. Then every single directory, every single subdirectory, will be able to get back into this directory. So let's count them. You've got one, two, three, four, five. So there's five right here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there are twelve subdirectories. But we have fourteen. So we have twelve subdirectories that all point back to this directory. We have this directory that points to itself. So 12 plus one is 13. And then we also have this one's parent directory. So I'm in PWD. I can see that I am in the home Joseph directory. If I wanted to, I could go CD dot dot, and I get into the home directory, PWD. And I do LS minus AL, and I can see that there is a link from the home directory to the Joseph directory, which gives us our last and final 14th thing. Now, getting back into my home directory, let's say I move around the system somewhere and I am lost. PWD, well, how do I get back to my home directory? There are a couple of ways. I can tell it the location of my home directory. So type in CD home Joseph, and that will get me back. Or, it's not back there, if I go somewhere else and I'm not in my home directory, I can type in the cd command by itself and it will take me back to my home directory. It will take me back to the directory that I belong to. So that takes me back, pwd, back to my home directory. I can also, if I'm over here in this slash directory again, I can type in cd space tilde. Tilde will take me to my home directory as well. PWD and then this tilde. If I go back again to this slash directory, I can type in cd tilde joseph. And that will also take me back to my home directory. It will also take me to the home directory of some other user if they're on the system, but as we saw earlier, when I look at the home directory, the only user in the system is me. All right, so those things will get me back into my directory. So I'm in this directory, 
And we know how to use the CD command to get in directories. So CD music. I can take a look around. I can see there's nothing there. I can hit CD to jump back to my home directory. PWD. I can see I'm in my home directory. And there we go. Now, what else can I do in this directory? You can see there's a list of files here. What is in this bash RC file? If I want to see the contents of a file, I can use the cat command, which is sort of for concatenate. So it's usually used for listing a whole bunch of files and concatenating them together. So you cat dot bash rc, and it will list the contents of the file. So here we go. This is the contents of the file, which is nice. And that's useful. Uh, if I wanted to, I could do things with that file. But you know, we're not going to do that right now. The next thing I want to note is, well, what are all these things in here? We have this export system thing, whatever, pager, and that's being commented out with a comment mark. Well, these things are part of my environment, my system environment. So look at my directory here. I can see there's a bash rc. There's a dot bash profile thing. So let's cat out the dot bash profile. We can see that the profile sets some variable path equals path colon home something and as much things are there. Basically what this is doing is it's adding whatever home is, it's adding bin to that. So what does that do? If I want to see what my path is, I can have an echo dollar path. And this tells me this path. Every single directory in this path are directories that I can execute commands in automatically if they exist. So if I created a slash home slash Joseph dot local slash bin directory, um, I could put programs in there and I could run them no matter where I was on the system. I could also run programs in the slash home slash Joseph slash bin directory, no matter where I am on the system. They're there. Now, one thing you'll note is that my dot directory is not in my path, so I cannot run programs in my current directory unless I specify which directory they're in, which can be a little confusing, but we can do that later. So how do I know what other variables are available? Clearly, we see there's a path. We can also echo the dollar home, and we see there's a home directory. Well, what else do we have? We can take a look at the env for environment command, and it will list a whole list of directories or valuables, that are a whole bunch of values that are being assigned automatically when I do stuff, log in, change things. This is all valuable information. All right, let's say I decided to exit out, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I want to go back to the terminal, I want to do something else again. I take a look at my directory, I can see there's stuff here, and I think, well, what did I do last time I was on the system? Well, there's this new file that just got created. It is a dot bash underscore history file. Well, what's in it? So cat v dot bash underscore history file, and we see it's a list of all the commands I typed in, which is kind of nice. Not only do I have that file there, but I can type in history, and get a listing of all the commands I typed in. And if I want, I can even rerun some of these commands again. So let's say I want to run this echo dollar bash. I could press the up arrow multiple times until I get back to it. Or I can see there's a number right next to it, the number 43, and I can do an exclamation point 43 and we'll run that command again and print out my path. So there you have it. This is my home directory, a little tour showing you how to get around and how to navigate and what the contents are there. Um, you can see information about ownership of files, group ownerships. You can see sizes of things and dates and names. So there you go. There's our home directory. And those, there you go, Linux home directories.